is a drawing of the layout of the buildings. I've been asked quite a lot of questions in the comments about the layout and people are getting a little bit confused because there's quite a few buildings. So I thought I'd just film this again. I have filmed this once before. I think it was in episode 12. So I have two rows of five, which I can use for the time being. And I am going to plant some Webb's lettuce, one of my favorites, and some spring onions. One of Tony's favourites. Both of these need to be sewn at about half an inch deep, so that's good. So I'm going to sew one side with lettuce and one side with spring onions. Let's start with the spring onions. Very, very tiny seeds. Oh, let me get the pack out. So we have very tiny seeds, so I'm going to empty them into the palm of my hand. Luckily it's not too greasy out here. Put those over there. And then with a pinch, I'm going to sprinkle them a few seeds in each pot down one row. About half a dozen or so. in each pot. There's a few more. About ten or so in each pot. There we have it. Right, that's that side. I'm going to tuck those away. I have sprinkled the spring onion seeds into this side of the pots and I'm now going to sew the lettuce into this side. So again very very tiny seeds. So I'm going to empty a few into the palm of my hand and then pinch them. Yes lettuce seeds are even tinier. I'm just going to pinch a few into each pot. Spread them around fairly even now. There's quite a few in each pot here. They're so tiny. So there, I hope you can see that. And then I'm going to cover them both up, both sides up, with about half an inch of soil. Firstly, I'm going to fold the seeds up and put them away so we don't get lost. Now, very handily on one seed packet, I've got a marker for my lettuce seeds. I'll have to find something to mark spring onions with. So I have covered those with soil. Just going to pack that down gently and then water them in and keep them watered. If you have a watering can with a gentle sprinkler, you can use that, but I don't at the moment. So I'm going to give them all a good watering, very gently, so that I don't disturb them. And it soak right through, and then put them in my little greenhouse. before I forget this side is my lettuce and I'll find a marker for the spring onions 
Right, I've made a little marker, again using one of those bamboo skewers and a CD marker pen. <laughs> so, mark my spring onions. on your eyes for the tap which is fairly reasonable looking for quite a narrow basin just for the upstairs toilet but there's not much room up there but we want it to be deep if possible these are way too Way too wide. I love the colour of that. That one looks as if it might fit. I see a floating, floating cabinet. Right, so the 204, I think it's for the ensemble. Yeah, a slim vasque, turquoise marble, which means furniture. Turquoise slim mirror. Oh, so the mirror comes with it, which I'm not so keen on, apart from that lovely picture of that person in it. But not the tap, so the tap is extra. Oh, I think you can buy them separately though. Looks like the Vasque, the sink is 44 and the furniture is 95, so 139 maybe. Which we're looking for something less than four. Again, 45 and a half, too deep. So we've decided to go for this turquoise one, not the cabinet at the side and not the mirror, but just the little basin and the turquoise cabinet. I have a cup of tea for Tony. We're going to take that up to where he's working in the upstairs apartment of the front house and going up the back stairs from the courtyard and we're going to find out what Tony's up to lovely morning again nice and bright not too cold this morning it's a little bit nippy ah. So what are you working on at the moment? You can see what I'm doing. What are you doing? The architrave around this door? Yes. Okay. <coughs> well that's Tony's job for the moment. And the electrician's been cracking on. I see he's put the switch on the wall there and here by this door here. So what else? What else has been happening? Oh, more, yeah, all switches and things. It's, Taking quite a while though. I've just noticed there's a gap in that. Are you gonna can you fill that bit in? No, I'm gonna paint it a different colour and call it a feature. <laughs> You're gonna paint it a different colour? Yeah, and call it a feature. It's already a different colour. Yeah. And make it into a feature. I don't think so. I don't think that's what we call a feature, don't we? So <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah, we've still got quite a lot of making good. Oh, but things are appearing. We now have sockets around the room. I mean, that um, conduit, unfortunately, sticks out like a sore thumb at the moment. But once the skirtings are filled and painted and, and the conduit gets filled as well, then you won't notice that so much. And there's one there ready for the radiator. So things have been happening. Oh, some wires. There's not a lot to show, but there's wires sticking out and things have been progressing and they just progress very slowly. Don't they, Tone? Yes. yes. 
sockets and things. I suppose it's all got to happen before we can decorate. Yeah, the plasterer hasn't even started on this hole here. Is this part of his remit? Well, yes. Oh, well, I could do that myself, really. Um, so I think what we're going to do, we're going to get started on this ceiling. I, I can feel around the, I can feel around the coving, and um, sand down where Tony's filled and refill and resand and so on and so on. So I can make a start. I can do the ceiling out in the hall. Is that one ready for me to do something? Yes, you can do that. Yeah, this one could be filled and painted up, up here. There's no electrics going up there, is there? Nope. Okay, so there's a couple of little jobs I can get started on. Anything else happened in here? Oh, a lot more mess. Um, again, we have lots of wires. Why is it they seem to have a lot more wires in France than we do in the UK? I think it's because you have to have a separate supply for pretty much everything. Anyway, lots more wires. I have no idea yet when the electrician will be finished. So we're still waiting on that. Um, not much I can show you. What about in here? Ah, now you've ripped out the old toilet and the basin, haven't you? So this room in here used to have the toilet, where well, you can see where the toilet was, and then the ba big basin that was on the wall here. Well, we just went and bought a new small basin and cabinet for that. Um, we need to we need to have the waste pipes in first before we can go and buy the toilet. So we're waiting on the trench being dug downstairs by the main big gate so that we can investigate the drains. Then we've got to wait on the plumber coming and putting in stack pipes. And then we can connect up the toilets and the wastes. We are pretty much waiting on a lot of things at the moment. Now, Tony has boarded up the ceiling because we're going to have a spotlight there. We're going to have a light on the wall over the mirror, over the basin. There was an old window there, which went out to the barn area above the drive through. So that's been boarded up and it will be from the other side because that on the other side will turn into a bathroom over there eventually. So we have hole cut ready for the vent. The pipes and that are already up there for the vent. I know that. So a lot of the stuff is going on in the background at the moment and we can't move on to decorating stage. Um, the pipe work is going to be boxed in. We're going to have a... Um, Tony's going to build the wall around that and insulate along where the pipes are. And obviously the cabinet will hide up the pipes as well. So we won't see those. But yeah, as work's progressing, but when it's at this stage, you, you can't see a lot for your time. And then... Back in this room, they'd already started on the electrics and things in here, so not a lot's changed in here. A little bit of plumbing, again, that will be concealed. Um, we're waiting on waste pipes. So we're still waiting on the plumber coming to do the pipes to connect to the drains. We're still waiting on the digger to come and dig the trench. I put the pipes in for the plumber. The plumber did come and mark out where we wanted the trenches. Um, so that's a start. I mean, it, it, it's a bit disheartening sometimes that we can't see an awful lot of progress, but we have to do all this in the background first. So, again, there's still more plasterboarding to be finished. Uh, we didn't think we were going to have to do that wall, but that's the one with the big bulge at the bottom, which turned into a very large hole and has now turned into a new wall. But it does add some insulation, which is good. Extra insulation is always good. And again, we have 
the ventilation hole ready up there because this will be a little kitchen area in this corner. The pipework is there for the sink. But yeah, progress, but yeah. Anyway, that's where we are at the moment. Um, Tony's been up here every day doing things. The electrician's been here pretty much every day. Right, we're currently playing a waiting game. I don't know if you can see these red marks on the floor. Actually, some of them have got worn off now. But it heads off over there towards the the big doors. Now these have been marked out by the plumber and they were actually marked out last week as to where to excavate the current drains so that we can connect into them because we need to put stack pipes up this wall here for the new bathroom that we're creating upstairs and the, the future new bathroom which will also be up there. So there's been a hold up and the hold up is due to the weather because it's the sun's out at the moment which is rather nice but it's been raining quite a bit and at the same time as we have this trench excavated by the digger we're going to have the rest of the landscaping done in the courtyard and out the back unfortunately the wet weather doesn't help because it doesn't make it easy to move the earth around so that's been delayed now for another week which is very disappointing for me because at the same time the garden through the back of the barn there has still has some piles of branches and things to get rid of which again we haven't been able to do because it, the weather's been damp so we can't burn the last of those and also the garden at the back of the barn there needs completely leveling out and some of the old concrete structures pulled out of the ground and it just needs a general tidy up before we can even start building some of my raised beds that I want for my garden so there's a delay on that as well so unfortunately we're playing a waiting game on quite a few things so we're playing a waiting game on the digger coming which is stopping us starting on my garden and is stopping us doing this courtyard and is stopping us digging up the trench here for the new drain connection which is stopping us doing the bathroom up in the top apartment up there and so on now the other thing is the electricity again I contacted the electricity board in November to give us more power because in France they only give you the minimum that they think that they can get away with now I've had the power increased very very slightly to the maximum that they're allowed to do because it was pointed out to me that that big cable coming into the building up there needs replacing, needs a new one. So that's in hand, but we've been waiting since November. I've had a phone call a couple of weeks ago saying that I was going to get a phone call in the middle of March to make the appointment, and then it might be about two weeks after that. So we're currently looking at the end of March for them to come and fit this, which of course is stopping me having my new cooker connected because that needs the power upgrade um the electrician that's working upstairs is still working of course we're waiting for him to finish in order to do decorating we're waiting for the plumbing to be finished in order to do decorating so everything's holding us up while we're waiting for all these things the electrician has put the big cable up there ready to connect when the electricity company come so he's preparing but it's it's slow progress at the moment it's getting a little bit disheartening when things are so slow um i showed you the the plaster building now he's gone away for the time being because he's got other things to be getting on with and he's being delayed by things not being ready so the whole project is going really slow while we're waiting for all these things so there you have it for the moment. We are playing a waiting game. Oh, right. The other thing that we're waiting for, of course, is to get this roof started. Now we were originally told that the roof would be here in March to start it. 
And obviously we were hoping that that meant the beginning of March. We're now told that he's not coming till April. And again, we're hoping that's going to be the beginning of April, but we just don't know. He's also told us that we need permission, which we didn't realise that we needed permission to mend the roof or put or redo the roof. So a French friend of ours inquired at the Mary for us and came back with lots of forms that we've now got to fill in. Um, apparently they can't refuse his permission, but because we're within a certain meterage of a um, what we would call a listed building in the UK, which is a monument, which is the chateau behind us that the prince owns, then we have to get permission for everything from the mayor. Now we were going to put slates on this, but apparently we can't do that. We have to replace it with the old fashioned tiles. I'm not too worried about that, I'd rather like those. But yeah, so there's something that we hadn't even thought about. We didn't realise that we needed permission to renew the roof or repair the roof on the building that already existed. And it's a little bit ironic that across the other side of the river, there are derelict buildings. The mill is derelict where it had a fire and pieces of wood are floating down the river and blocking the river up. Um, but nobody can make you do anything apparently about that. Anyway, we're going to fill the full map. We're going to ask our friend to help us fill the full map because she's been very helpful in that respect. And this is the friend that Tony is mending the big pot for. Because it's cast iron, he cannot make it look pretty. He's mended it and he's hoping that once it gets heated up, for it's, a, it's some form of a cooking pot, that it won't crack. But he can't guarantee that. But he's done his best to mend it and we're going to return it to her at her chateau later. Well, we have taken you to her chateau once before and that's where her husband has the old cars in the big barn. So we're going to return that to her and at the same time ask her for a favour to help us fill out these forms for the Mary, for the roof. I find it very strange that we have to fill out these forms. I think we have to do about five copies of these forms. So it must be a bit like our planning department back in the UK. And we also have to take photographs and do five copies of those and submit those to the mayor and that they can't actually say no so it seems a bit pointless to me but if that's what they want that's what we're going to do need to keep the mayor happy because we need to we do need to ask his permission for a couple of other things a bit later on right we're back in the sheet kitchen and i'm still using up the last of the free veg that we were given which is more pumpkin now, I've chopped it up into smallish pieces. I'm going to roast it in the oven with a little drop of olive oil and a bit of seasoning. Same as we did for the soup. But then I'm going to make... But out of this, I'm going to make some pumpkin and camembert tarts. So I was going to have a little drop of... This is a, a balsamic glaze. Balsamic vinegar will do. This is slightly thicker. This is a balsamic glaze and obviously some pumpkin and some camembert cheese. So I'm going to start by roasting this in the oven and we want to soften it up and slightly colour it. So I'm going to put some olive oil on there. And we're going to season it. A little bit of pepper, uh, a little bit of a little bit of salt that was, sorry not pepper. Um, I'm going to also put a good pinch of black pepper. So we've got olive oil, a pinch of salt, and a good pinch of black pepper. So we're going to roast those in the oven on a medium heat. So I've got it on about 175, which is a medium heat on my oven, in the middle shelf, so that they don't go too black round the corners. So this is the ready-made pastry I'm going to use. Excuse my French pronunciation, I think that's fouillette. 
Pat Friatai. And it is, as you can see from the picture, it's a sort of a, a flaky pastry. Now I'm going to make another dish today. I've got a little bit of the little bits of the pumpkin left over. So I'm going to grate those up. I've got a little bit of sweet potato or one sweet potato. I'm going to grate that up. And then together with that, I'm going to use some onions, which I'm going to slice thinly. And a can of chickpeas. And what I'm going to make there is some pakora or vegetable bhajis, on a bit like an onion bhaji, but with a mixture of ingredients. And I'm going to bake those in the oven. So slightly healthier than an onion bhaji. But firstly, we'll, we'll crack on with the pastry. From this, I'm going to make two small tartlets in these small round... I would say they're about seven inch tins, quite thin. So I'm going to grease those and layer those with pastry. And then for the rest, I'm just going to use a flat baking sheet because I don't have any more of these or any smaller ones. I've actually managed to find this little tray which is actually meant to be for Yorkshire puddings, but I can make four smaller tartlets on this tray as well. So I think that's going to be enough for the ingredients that we've got for today. So what I'm doing here, the pastry comes in a circle, which isn't always easy to work with. If I had a bigger tray, it would be fine, but I don't really want to waste too much pastry. So what I've done is I've laid it in the middle and I'm just going to fold over the edges quite loosely and tuck it in around the edges and that will puff up nicely and I'm doing something similar well, that's ready to be filled I'm doing something similar on this one as I've laid the complete circle over the top well, I have just trimmed around the edges and now what I'm doing is just tucking just tucking the corners under to make it slightly rounder again that will puff up as it cooks and it'll look quite pretty. I'm not going to blind bake these because it's very, very thin pastry anyway. And I am not really putting much in the way of liquid inside it. So if, if for instance, I was doing a quiche, which obviously has runny eggs and milk, then I would blind bake it first. But this will be fine as it's, the liquid will have come out of the pumpkin which is pre-cooked the cheese will melt down but by that time the pastry will have cooked so you can see what I'm doing here I'm just tucking it under the corners and just tidying it up a little bit as you can see now I have the two bigger tart tins and the smaller ones all ready for their fillings right I've just taken my pumpkin out of the oven because that is softened up now and ready to go and I'm actually slicing up a few onions. Now what I've done is, I'm trying to show you close up, I've left the stalk almost whole and I'm slicing off thin pieces still attached to the stalk. So it stays in a slither. And I'm going to roast, I'm going to turn the oven up a bit and roast those with a little bit of olive oil and get a little bit of colour on those. Now I could have put them in with the pumpkin I'd rather do them afterwards and put the heat up a little bit, but you can do them together if you want to. Right, I've started to fill my pastry. So what I've done is I've got two camemberts, two of the standard size camemberts, and what I'm doing is I've sliced them in half and then I'm cutting them into thin wedges. So if your camembert is very gooey, this might be a little bit more awkward, but mine's sort of medium soft at the moment, so it's quite handleable. So I'll swap these over and show you what I did. I basically went, I made a line around the edge with these little thin wedges, like 
like so. These will obviously melt down and go all gooey and unctuous. Oh, that was a tiny little one. But yeah, I've pretty much done two circles of this. And then I've dotted the pumpkin around on the surface. Well, just a little bit in the middle. Then I have dotted a few bits of pumpkin around. Like so. And then a few pieces in the middle part. Right, that's actually worked out very well for my cheese. I've just got a couple of tiny little extra pieces that I'm putting in the other pastry, in the other tart. So I'm just going to put the pumpkin on these small ones. That could work. Yeah. So I have a couple of pieces of this left over which I can now use in the bigger tart. Slightly more filling in those. So all that's left now is to chop that with a few caramelised onions, a drizzle of balsamic, and then bake them in the oven. Just take the onions out, they've just started to brown slightly, they're nice and soft, and then we'll brown a little bit more on the top of the tart. So we're going to spread these around the top of the tarts. Not all of it will stay together. A lot of them, enough of them will to decorate these. Which is a bit hot still. So I we spread these around on the top. Right, we can try a little bit extra on these tarts here. So open that one up a little bit. Oh. Let's open that one up a little bit. Oops, a couple more on there. Oh. Now we're just going to drizzle those with a little drop of balsamic glaze, just add, a, add an extra flavour. If you haven't got the balsamic glaze you can use a little drop of balsamic vinegar, but don't put too much because it will make it wet. This is more squeezy. So I want a few little drops on each one. And I'm going to beat up an egg and just glaze around the edge of the pastry before we put it in the oven. Now I've turned the oven back down slightly, turned it down to around 170 in order to cook these. And we will just keep an eye and make sure that they're browning nice and evenly. I love balsamic, as you can probably tell. Don't have to put as much as this on, but yeah, it's one of my favourites with the cheese. Wow, this is going to be so good. Oh, and the smell of the balsamic already. So, I've beaten up an egg in a little bowl with fork. I'm going to use this just to put a little wash around the edge of the pastry. Just to give it a nice brown. If you don't have an egg, you could use milk. Or well, you can leave this step out altogether, but it does add a nice glow to the pastry. And I'm going to use the rest of the egg in my next recipe. A good 20 minutes, perhaps a little longer. We'll just keep an eye on them after about 15 minutes on a medium heat. 
but the ingredients don't need to cook through they just need to warm through because obviously the pumpkin is pre-cooked the onions are now pre-cooked and the cheese you could eat without cooking it anyway glazing this one and this one's going to go in now I'm going to check on them in about 15 minutes I'm, the oven is on 170 while those are cooking I'm going to get on with my next recipe well just keeping an eye on those tarts they're cooking lovely I'll show you those shortly right firstly the leftover pieces of pumpkin I've grated those up it does look a bit like carrot and you can actually use carrot instead of pumpkin if you haven't got any and to that I'm going to do the same to the smallish sweet potato that I've got here probably about the same amount actually and then I tried to do a similar amount of onions so I'm I'm guessing about three decent sized onions to go with that so there we have it together with that I have the beaten egg from earlier and I have a can of chickpeas and then I have some seasonings so these are a little, little bit like an onion bhaji um, I'm not going to make these ones too hot because we're actually going to our friend's chateau tomorrow it's somebody's birthday and along with the tarts I'm going to take these as little party foods so there are a couple of people that don't like it too hot but you can make them as hot as you like now you can use just a curry powder or I'm going to use a mixture of spices which would make up a curry powder but if you've ju just got a curry powder, however hot you like it, you can use that and some salt and pepper. Right, firstly I'm going to grate the sweet potato. So once I've finished that, I'll come back and show you how we carry on. So I'm just checking on the tartlets, tarts, and they're not quite ready yet. They've been in the oven for about 25 minutes now. The pastry is is fluffing up nicely but it could do with a little bit more cooking so I'm going to give it about another five ten minutes so I've finished all the grating I've grated up the leftover pumpkin and the sweet potato in there now there's quite a lot of it actually I'm going to use the three onions to go with it I'm not going to grate those because I should firstly I should be blubbing in tears and uh, probably sneezing so I'm not going to do that and they do go a bit mushy if you try to grate them I and mean, if you've got a machine that chops them up very, fairly finely you could probably use that I'm just going to slice them up by hand fairly thinly so I'll come back once I've done that also because it's looking like I've got quite a lot of ingredients I may add a further tin of the chickpeas but we'll see how we go with one first Right, as you can see, I've sliced up the onions. I've sliced them pretty thinly. I've actually sliced them a little bit like I did before in the wedges. So I've left the root intact so that I can slice them without slicing the fingers too much. Anyway, these we are going to partly cook before we add them to the other ingredients. Because the onion could be a bit harsh. The other ingredients will cook in the oven with the rest of the mixture but the onions can be a bit harsh if we don't pre-soften them so that's what I'm going to do now and then I'm going to assemble it all got a couple of tablespoons of oil in there now if you want to make this really low fat you can use a spray oil and put a lid on the pan to soften them and you can use the same thing to roast these in the oven I'm actually going to use a little bit of oil anyway not too much but I've got a couple of tablespoons of oil in that pan I'm going to put it on a medium heat and stir it and cook them slowly for about five minutes until they've softened. All these onions are softening in the pan here. I'm going to open the tin of chickpeas and I am going to put those in the processor and make those into a paste. I'm going to strain off a drop of the water that they come in. Now if, if you don't want to use the egg, for instance, to keep this veggie if you don't want to use the egg or you're allergic to egg you can use some of the water from the chickpeas in the mix and this helps to bind it together so I'll reserve a little bit of the water I'll strain that separately and we may need a little bit to mix with the chickpeas also to be able to blend them but we don't want a wet sloppy mix we pretty much want to drain them and try to blend them that way and add maybe a tablespoon of extra liquid if need be 
So I've just taken my tartlets out of the oven and these are lovely and cooked. As you can see it's gooey melty cheese so you can eat these hot or you can eat them cold which is what we're going to do. We're going to have them as buffet food, party food. I'll just get the other one out or one of the other ones and show you. Also at the same time you can see my onions are very slightly browning and beginning to soften. Just keep stirring those. And the other tartlets look lovely, don't they? See how the pastry's risen up? That's lovely and crispy. Oh, it's burning my fingers. So they're ready to go. We'll continue on with this recipe. So what we're going to do is allow those to cool down slightly. Um, I'm just about to put these in the food processor, so we'll do that next. Right, I've just turned the heat off on these onions. They've taken about 10 minutes. As you can see, they've just started to get a little colour, but they've softened up nicely. And then the chickpeas I have liquidised. I've had to put quite a bit of the uh, water from the tin back in to make it liquid liquidise it. So it make, turns it into sort of a paste. Can you see that? It turns it into a sort of a thick, gloopy paste. Which is what we're going to use to mix all our vegetables together. My hands are clean, I have washed them. <laughs> so, what we're going to do now is allow these onions to cool slightly. Then we're going to combine all those ingredients together along with the flavourings. I think in this instance this is not going to be enough so I'm going to go and get myself another can of chickpeas because I don't think this is going to be enough to bind all these ingredients together but it's always good to make a big batch because I can freeze some. Right, what I've done is I've added another can of chickpeas, drained them and I've only blitzed it very quickly so that you can see there's a little bit more texture to it there and it's a little bit more of a thick mixture. So this is what's going to bind all our ingredients together. In the meantime, I've put all the rest of the ingredients in the pan, not to cook them, just so that you can see what I'm doing and because it's a big enough container to be able to combine everything together. So we're just assembling it now and then we'll make it into little patties and roast it in the oven. Right, into the mixture I've added the, the liquidised chickpeas, which as you can see has made a nice gloopy paste. Into that I'm going to add the seasonings. But I'm pre-warming a couple of pans in the oven with a little bit of oil in. Now you can use the spray oil if you like, but obviously the oil is what helps to crisp them up. I've set the oven on to 200 degrees. Right, I'm just going to add the seasonings into this mix now. Right, I've measured out my spices to put in the mix and I shall tell you what I've got here. As I said, you can use um, a curry powder. I would definitely recommend this is garlic powder because that won't give you the heat but it will add the slight dryness to the mixture to help it stick together. So this is three heaped teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of paprika, two teaspoons of turmeric, two teaspoons of garam masala, two teaspoons of cumin seeds and then on this side I have half a teaspoon of sugar, half of a teaspoon of chilli powder, well that's actually slightly less because this is a hot chilli powder and I don't want to scare anyone and then a teaspoon of black pepper and a teaspoon of salt and that's all going into this mix and be combined along with the beaten egg I'm going to give those a good old mix so they're really well combined. As you can hear, the mixture sounds quite sticky, which is good. I probably won't need a lot of egg in there. It's all about the consistency, this recipe so that the ingredients will stick together. 
as I say, the egg just helps to do that a little bit, or I have got the reserved liquid from the chickpeas, which you can use instead of the egg. Now I think at the moment the consistency on this is pretty good. I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of egg. Not all of it. I think that will probably do. Give it another good mix in so the egg is completely spread out in the mixture. And then we can form it into bowls and put it in the oven to cook. I think the oil's heated up now, just for the oven click. It's at the right temperature. And what we're going to do now is get messy with our hands. You could use a couple of spoons if you want to. But we're going to try and form it into little patties. Um, and then I'm going to drop it into the oil. So I've decided as I'm operating the camera for you, I'm going to do it with two spoons so as not to get my fingers all sticky. I'm pretty much going to pull the mixture together. Something like the size of a small egg, probably. You can make them a bit smaller if you want to, or even slightly bigger, but they will take longer to cook. And then I'm just going to dollop that into the oil like that. I'm going to carry on doing those until they're all ready to put in the oven. Another one. There's about an egg sized dollop. Unfold the endy bits in if you can. There we have it. So I'm going to put that one in, get the other pan out and carry on. Right, I've finished scooping them into equal sized portions. Now the second batch has made 11, so I've made 17 altogether. So I will freeze a few of those. I'm going to cook them first and then freeze them for me and Tony to go over and curry the next time we have curry. So I'm, I've got the oven on 200. I think I'm going to turn that down slightly because I do want them to cook through to the middle um, without burning the edges. So I'm going to turn that down to about 180 and see how they go. And I think these are probably going to take about 10 minutes, then I'll turn them over and probably another 10 minutes. I've just checked on the onion barges and they're not cooking very quickly so I've turned the oven up. I've turned the oven back up to 200 because it obviously needs that extra bit of heat to crisp up the bottom before I can turn them over. Right, they've been in there for a while. I've turned them up. They've been in there for at least 20 minutes now. Um, and they're crisping up a little bit but they're a little bit softer than I would normally expect but I'm sure they're going to crisp up. So I'm using a spoon to turn them over. They have spread out slightly. I'm going to turn them over and crisp them up a little bit more. They're quite soft and I wouldn't normally expect that. I expect them to be a little bit firmer than that. I'm not sure they still taste good. So I'm going to go... Oh. And they are falling apart a little bit more than they would normally. I'm sure once they've crisped up a little bit more they'll be a little bit more solid. As you can see they are looking like onion bodges now. Um, maybe there's a little bit more moisture in the um, pumpkin than I'm used to using. But yeah, they're, they're going to be really tasty. I'm going to put them back in for a few more minutes because we're on the other side. Right. I've taken the bodges out of the oven now. They've crisped up a bit. They're a little bit firmer. They're crunchy around the edges. So they took a little bit longer than normal to cook because they were a little bit wetter, I believe. So that's probably the pumpkin. So I think if I made them with pumpkin again, I would probably add a little bit of flour into the mix just to dry it out a little bit. But I'm going to taste one now and then I'm going to put them away ready for tomorrow. So I've broken one open to show you what they're like in the middle. That's really hot actually. So they're real, really sort of light and fluffy in the middle and soft. And you can see that the onion, there's quite a lot of onion still in there. But yeah, I'm going to taste it now. It's a little bit hot. Hmm. Very hot. <laughs> but very tasty. Nice and spicy without being too hot. I've got that lovely Indian flavour and that onion bhaji flavour. But they're not too, too hot. Spicy hot. 
Hmm. So of the two recipes, I think the um, pumpkin with the camembert tart was perhaps the better one. As I say, next time I would just add a little bit of extra flour in with this because the pumpkin obviously gives off a bit more water than the other ingredients. But yeah, it's, it's extremely tasty and I'll definitely make them again. It's very, very hot, but I can't stop eating it. And it's got little crunchy bits all around the outside. So it's very tasty. Now we have been given a map, plan, drawing of the layout of the town from the arc which was found in the archives in the National Archives in Paris and this is our town and this dates from 1673 and it's really interesting because our buildings are featured on this I mean if you can see at the top center is our church and this is not to scale although it's very well laid out Louis the 14th, the Sun King, was on the throne. Now Louis the 14th was also known as Louis de Bourbon. Now the prince, the Spanish prince who lives in the chateau behind us, is also of the Bourbon family, the Bourbon Palmer. 